welcome back to my channel. My name is Zoe and I am currently living in Antigua and Barbuda in the Caribbean. Today I thought I'd take you through what it cost me to live here for a month to give you an idea if you would like to live in the Caribbean. So to start with we're going to go through the rent and accommodation that's available and I've got some examples to give you an idea of what you would be paying. So looking on Airbnb, I've put in the criteria of an entire apartment for two guests to include Wi-Fi, air conditioning and a kitchen. As you can see on the map, there's a lot of houses to the north of the island. Then the other popular areas are Jolly Harbour on the west and English Harbour to the south. Now my recommendation would be to go to Jolly Harbour or English Harbour because it's much easier to get to all the amenities. They'll be more or less on your doorstep and that'll be particularly important if you don't get a car. So focusing our search on English Harbour, let's get some comparisons of what you get for what you pay. So the dog house, this is £4,968 a month or $6,260, which um, can be quite steep, but it is in a very good location. And as you can see, it's got some very good amenities. Now with all of these prices, I'm giving you the full price that includes the Airbnb fee and all the taxes. So the next one we have is Sky Apartment at Energy at £7,563 or $9,530. At Energy, you do get access to their gym and to their yoga studio. It's across the road from where I actually stay, so distance from amenities is about the same. I'm not sure I would pay all that much extra to use the gym and the mem I could just get a membership. Next, we have Orchard House. A studio for £1,602 or $2,000. Now this is quite a sweet little home and it's in a good location near to everything. Of course it doesn't have a great kitchen but it has what you need and it does have the stove. So this is a good option. Next up we have Keith's Apartments for 2443 a month or $3,000. Now, I actually know this apartment quite well because this is the one that I do stay in every year. So I can vouch for what he says in the description is right. Now, I think I'm going to take you on a little room tour of this now so you can see what you get for that money. So as you come in, I've got space to keep my outdoor stuff. And I've got a kitchen area with a full fridge, freezer, cooker, everything I need, lounge area and a desk to work on bathroom, spare bedroom, which I keep my cameras in, and then my main bedroom. Outside, you've got a garden area, which we share, laundry, we have our rotor to take it in turns, and a little beach area with a great view over the harbour. So I hope that gives you a good idea of what you could be paying if you were to stay here for a month or a bit longer. Now I've done these prices in either EC dollar, US dollar or UK sterling, depending on what I've paid for them or the price that has come up in my research. But at the end of this video, I'll convert them all and show the pricing in all three currencies. So don't worry about doing the calculations right now. So your next item is car hire. Now you may not need to hire a car if you were staying in Jolly Harbour or English Harbour. Everything that you actually need will be on your doorstep. But if you want to venture around the island, it is easiest to have a car. And the prices are usually around 50 US dollars a day. Now I got a a good deal because I booked my, hired mine long term 
and I pay 665 US dollars a month. But it is worth having a look round and seeing what deals you can find. I did phone round a lot of people and badgering them and making offers until I got the deal I wanted. On top of that, you are going to need a driving license. So when you hire a car, you provide your, drive, your current home driving license to the person you're hiring from and they'll arrange that for you. That's an extra $20 US that you'll need to pay. For fuel, it's not expensive here. Nothing is that far away. It may take you a while to get there because the roads can be a bit uneven, there's a few potholes, but I don't spend that much on fuel. I would say 50 to 100 EC dollars a month, and that depends on how far I'm going. But you don't need much, honestly, it's not expensive. So we're going to move on to the next topic, which is groceries. So as I say, if you're in Jolly Harbour or English Harbour, you've got lots of local supermarkets available. In fact, in Jolly Harbour, you have quite a big one. And the one at Jolly Harbour also has lots of international brands. English Harbour, there's not so much of your national brands available. There's some, but not a great deal but you can get everything that you need. If you're staying long term, there's also the option to go to one of the bigger supermarkets. So I tend to go to First Choice, which is just outside St. John's, or there's one called Perry's that's in St. John's, and you can fill up your freezer. You've got a lot more choice than you'll find in the local places. But if you haven't got a car, don't worry, you'll get everything that you need. Just giving you a brief look now around some of the local stores available in English Harbour and some of the individual prices that you may pay. So for 10 fresh chicken wings, $8.61. Four chicken quarters fresh, $10.50. 100 grams of minced beef, $10.44. Potatoes, $3.50 a pound. A local lettuce, seven dollars fifty. Five liter bottle of water, six dollars fifty. Five hundred grams of laundry powder, five dollars forty-five. A packet of six toilet rolls, eleven dollars sixty. So you get the general idea, and I would budget for a whole month here around eight hundred EC. And as I said at the end, I'll convert that into all currencies. So the next thing you'll need is a SIM card. Now eSIMs don't always cover Antigua and Barbuda. So I got a physical SIM card on my first trip here. And then I top it up. And I do that every year, I just top it up again. I'm with Flo. And there's lots of shops around that have the sign up for Flow, Gigi, Cell, and you can just go in there and they will sort your phone out for you. I pay 100 EC dollars a month on my plan. That's about 40 US dollars. It's not the cheapest, but it does give you good data and it does work well when you're out and about and also when you can use your maps, etc. And so the next item is eating out. And this is really going to depend on where you eat and how often you eat out. I'd say I eat out once or twice a week. And I tend to eat in your mid-medium range restaurants. I really like some of them in English Harbour. And an average meal with drinks will cost me about 150 EC dollars. And that's about your average. You can pay a lot more for some of these restaurants. And you can also find some really nice local restaurants. There's one called Gina's on Morris Beach. And that is fantastic. Just local barbecued food. 
On to activities, and there's plenty to do here in Antigua. So here you have Nelson's Dockyard, and this is Shirley's Heights, and it's $15 for a day pass to enter both. Betty's Hope, a sugar plantation and museum, that's a nominal charge to enter. And then, of course, you have walking and hiking, and that's completely free. You get to see some great historical sites and these beautiful views, like this one. We've got Devil's Bridge. This is free to enter and definitely worth a visit. I love this place. And then you have the beaches. All 365 of them are completely free. Now you can do tours and they will obviously raise the cost. But if you have a car especially, it doesn't have to cost you that much to go and see the sites. To summarise all the costs that we've spoken about, for a single person, you can expect to pay around $4,396 a month or £3,547. And for a couple, $5,033 or £4,047. Of course, these costs will depend on your circumstances. These are just based on what my spending would be. So I hope that's given you a good idea of what it costs for me, and maybe you, to live in the Caribbean for a month. Obviously, everybody's going to be different. Depends whether you want a different type of accommodation, whether or not you have a car, whether you want to take on extra activities. But this will give you a nice general guideline of what it could cost you. If you have any other questions or want to leave a comment, please do so below. And I hope to see you again soon. Ciao for now.